And this is just a quotation. This one, okay. As compared to one, aren't they? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, November 21st Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency regular implementation board meeting. Uh, why don't we just start off with, uh, we'll just start from one end to the other with introductions. Thank Please. you. Laurel Pervetti, City of San Jose Implementation Board. Andrew Crabtree, and City of Morgan Hill. Pat Tucker, City of Gilroy, City Council. Uh, Mike Wasserman, County Board of Supervisors. Devons County, San Clara Valley Water District, uh, alternate for Brian Schmidt. Linda Lazak, San Clara Valley Water District, for myself. Hello. Gordon Siebert, Morgan Hill City Council, and alternates. Thank you, thank you, Gordon. Very, thank you very much. And this is a public meeting. If there's anyone wishing to speak about any item not on the agenda, you can submit a card or you can raise your hand or something. I don't know if we have any cards here or not, but I don't believe we have any at this time. So we will move on to item number one, which is approval of the minutes from our October 17th meeting. Motion, discussion? Move approval. Second. Got an approval, a uh, motion made and second. Any discussion regarding item number one? Seeing none, we have no cards. That all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. Mayor, do you have a point? Yes. Only one point. Um, this will also be back on in January for government board approval. So you won't see this again with the governing board will. Right. Thank you. Implementation Perfect. board takes care of it and it doesn't come back. I like that. All right. <laughs> item number two is employment options for the executive officer position. The recommended action is directing the implementation board recruitment subcommittee and interim executive officer to proceed with the hiring process for an executive officer as an in-house agency employee. And Ken, are you gonna make, no, Vera. Vera's gonna make a presentation, please. Just very, very briefly, I think that the report um, says pretty much everything, but there were three options that we explored. The, there are really the only three options that, where we could hire someone for the executive office position. The first is to hire as an independent contractor. The second would be to contract with a member agency for those services. And the third would be to establish an in-house employment position. Um, as mentioned in the memo, the independent contractor position we don't believe is available because there are legal tests for how much liability and how much, con you know, related to how much control of that position the agency has. And we don't believe that this meets the tests for an independent contractor, so that option is not available to us. Um, the second is to contract with a member agency for services of an executive officer. And um, we have no one who has expressed any interest. I know Ken, the executive officer, the interim executive officer, went to some of the agencies earlier on in this process and asked about interest and has been along the way, and no one has expressed any interest in doing that. So it's not viable. Additionally, there are some other reasons expressed in the memo why that's an undesirable method. Um, and with regard to the last option, which is an in-house employment position, that's really about the only, that's really the only option that you have. And it means that the person is fully accountable to this board and, and will be working full time for the agency doing the work that you direct and the work that they're required to do by the formation documents to move the agency along. So that is the recommended option. Um, I had a few recommendations um, that were a little bit more expansive, but just so that you know. The first was that it, to direct the subcommittee for this um, board to direct the subcommittee and the interim executive officer to proceed with the recruitment as an in-house employment position at the agency. The second one was that uh, the um, subcommittee and executive officer continue to utilize legal and other professional resources because we're a new agency and we need to comply with laws governing this employment and how we hire and how we uh, conduct the recruitment and the questions that we ask and that kind of thing. And so to seek advice where necessary. Um, the last one is also that the um, agency um, have a contractual arrangement with whoever they decide is a successful candidate. 
and that all of the terms of employment be expressed in that agreement. That's along the way, but that's sort of a path to take toward employing this person. Thank you very much. If you have any questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Again, we're on item number two. If anyone in the public wishes to speak to this item, please just raise your hand or cough or something, and we'll recognize you. Committee members, yes. I'm just wondering why there wasn't consideration of hiring a firm that would provide one or more qualified individuals to serve in this function. That ends up being the same independent contractor um, issue that we have with a firm as we do with, the, with an individual contractor. Again, you're, you're providing certain services. This board actually directs that officer or that person. So it wouldn't be multiple persons. You need one person at the head of the organization. And um, there really are the same independent contractor considerations. Just because it's an arm length doesn't mean that you would be directing them any less. Thank you. I might interesting. I might yes, add Ken. to that that technically right now you have hired my firm, and my firm has hired me. Now I'm the only employee, so it, it's easy to have staff meetings. Uh, but the point <laughs> is, you hired my firm. <laughs> And, but if you go to a larger consulting organization and we look at, at the hourly rates and then the overhead costs, even if you try to negotiate it down, uh, you end up with some rather lar much larger numbers in terms of cost. And I think you just, you, you, it w you wouldn't be, econ I don't think you could find an economically uh, livable solution in the, uh, in the, in the consultant world uh, unless it was really sort of oddball, like a retired public employee sets his own firm up. <laughs> and there aren't a whole lot of us around. Thank you for that. Um, I would imagine, yes, Gordon. Not to be argumentative, but I happen to work for such a firm. I'm not interested in it. I don't think my firm is interested. Our billing rate is $125 an hour for registered professional engineers. I wonder what your billing rate is. Uh, my billing rate is normally less than that. Because uh, it's a flat fee for a year and it comes out to about eighty-five dollars okay. an hour. Comparable consultants are probably twice my hourly rate plus overhead. So if we're dealing, we're dealing with far more than one hundred and twenty-five an hour if we're out in the in the consulting world in in terms of, of conservation biologists and, and people in in that room. And you know those are those are the practical considerations, but in terms of the legal considerations, we think that there are significant legal issues um, regarding considering anybody an independent contractor. You know they're going to be sitting in agency offices. They need to be available to the public. They'll be here at least 40 hours a week. You are going to direct their actions. Everything that they prepare just about is to go to you for or, or the governing board for approval. Um, they are going to be working very independently in order to do that, but they are still going to be the face of the agency. It's not a contractor who is selected to do a piece of the work. And one of the reasons why, you know, Ken is appropriately an independent contractor, he has been working on the HCP for a number of years. It was a rollover into this function. It makes a lot of sense to do that. We felt our way around before the agency was um, was formed on May 26th. A lot of us started volunteering services to the agency just to get that first meeting going, get the second meeting going, and you know that was more independent. You were not here directing us yet. And so that startup is, is more appropriately that way, but as you become a permanent agency with regular functions, and you know, it's less so, much less so. Thank you for the legal explanation. Thank you, Ken. And uh, committee member Schmidt, I, I certainly understand, Gordon, um, the, the cost is something that we want to keep an eye on because some of those numbers just seem staggering. And when I see engineers and doctors thinking about switching jobs, then I know we need to you know, keep an eye on that, absolutely. Committee members, more discussion here on the three options before this. Our council has suggested number three is really the viable way to go, but we need to have discussion and ultimately a motion. Motion to approve item number three, uh, selection number three. Sorry. Any further discussion? Do I? Yes, Commissioner Lazat. Yeah, item number three. It's item number two, and it's choice number three. Action number three. Establish an in house employment position with the Habitat Agency as our council is oh, recommended. Right, no. and does it include the additional recommendations on the oh, next yeah. page, one, two, good, and three? Good point. <clears throat> well, we've already done number one. 
Well, have we? Yeah, I, maybe, maybe I, Vera, do we need you all desire, three? You really just, you, you can direct how we're going to advertise this position, how we're going to do it, and we will just do number two and three. You know, we assume that that's the direction okay. of the board. Okay. If you tell us that that's what you desire. Okay. Thank you. So motion maker and, and seconder agree with that? Yes. Yep. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes unanimously. We now go on to agenda item number three. And first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, we had Brian Schmidt, did Brian, is he gone? No, he didn't. Brian Schmidt from the Water District and Council Member Rose Herrera and myself for the last hour and a half were in that little room back there. Uh, we met first with Ken and discussed the whole recruiting process. And then we did an interview with uh, CPS HR Consulting company that was, uh, I believe the only one actually, Ken, that ended up answering the RFP. That is correct. If we that's correct. And the information that Ken gave us about this company was very favorable, um, well known in his experience. And uh, after that, we sat down for about 45 minutes, mm -hmm. um, cross-examining, if you will, uh, CPS HR Consulting. The principal that was there was a lady named Pamela. I don't have her first name in front of me, last name in front of me, but um, also was Ed Tweez, the former city manager. Ed right back there, Pamela, there you go. Ed Tweez, the uh, former city manager of, of Morgan Hill, is now with that consulting firm. And just for full disclosure, um, Ed joined with the firm far before our RFP went out. There's no conflict or apparent inappropriateness of any type there. Um, after meeting with them, we then asked them to leave the room and the subcommittee, which this committee and the governing committee had appointed, again, myself, committee members Herrera and Schmidt, we agreed unanimously to make a recommendation to this implementation board that CPS, that we contract with CPS HR Consulting for $24,000, their fee as is uh, itemized in the report, and, and plus a $5,000 contingency fee giving Ken that authority if need be for anything else. Um, there's nothing foreseen, but it may come up. We didn't want to, that to hold up the process over the next couple of months. Ideally, what the plan is, if this board here by a majority vote agrees with that, that'll be going forward. The CPSHR consulting will then work with Ken to more further define the job, the description of the exec that we're looking for to replace Ken. It was very detailed in the RFP that went out. This is what we were looking for. And in addition, the firm will be calling members of the subcommittee, the three of us that I mentioned. And if anybody else wishes to be called too, they'll be happy to call and interview you to ask what do you feel the new executive director, what skills, uh, background that new executive director should possess. It's open to everyone. It's, it's not just the subcommittee of of the three of us. If you have any input, you'll have their number, they'll have your number. If you want them to call you, they will do that. Time-wise, we're hoping to get all that information to them if we choose to, to appoint them, to hire them. And so that somewhere by middle of January, the, they can start their soliciting. They have a number of people already in their database that they feel would be good candidates for this job, but they also want to do a larger search. They would put that out in the middle of January, within 30 days, gather, interview, et cetera, then come back to us in, in February, late February, somewhere in there, for us to make a decision on people that they've vetted. And if we come up with somebody that we like, at that point we can appoint someone, or we can h offer to hire someone if they choose to accept it. They often have to give 30-day notice. Now you're at the end of March, you're starting April. That would leave 60 days of overlap for that person to work with Ken to learn what the Santa Clara County HCA is, is all about. And I don't normally as the chair do all that talking, but I think because I was on that subcommittee, the other two were not here, I, I needed to pass all that on. Um, question, oh, anybody wishing from the public to speak to item number three, except for you two? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> motion, motion to approve the recommendation of going with CPS HR. Consulting. Okay. Second. second. Is, there's a second. Any further discussion? Any questions? And I was kidding. If you have any questions, of course, of Ken or, or of uh, 
Pamela and Ed. Yes. I'm not a budget consultant, but I'm wondering because in the beginning last year, there were you said that if we hired a direct employee, that there were a lot of other steps that had to be taken in regards to pension, 401k, CalPERS, whatever, whichever way you right. are recommending. So in during that time of this timeline that was just outlined, would you be? Well, let me, let me respond to that. One of the ways that I was envisioning this perhaps occurring is that, you know, depending what type of benefits the, the board wants to offer this position, it may depend on the candidate. And one of the things that you could certainly offer in a recruitment is to say that, you know, that PERS may be negotiable whatever it happens to be that, you know, whatever you want to offer, at a bare minimum, you're going to have to offer Social Security, right, <laughs> as a retirement. that They're going to have to pay into that. We're going to have to set that up. What I've done is um, I will contract for someone to do a job specification, uh, a lawfully compliant job specification for this position. I will contract for someone to um, do a contract, a standardized contract that you can, you know, add provisions to or whatever, that'll be ready. Uh, the consultant should already have a contract for their services. Um, we, we came up with a template that was, that should have been um, distributed with the um, request for proposals. And so, um, and that had some timeline blanks or whatever, but a lot of that is done too. Um, I will also ask someone to set up whatever other employment things we need for one employee. You know, once you get over a certain number of employees, you need to have a lot more in place, but I'll, we'll do whatever we need to lawfully do within that time. And so, um, if need be, um, I may need to come to the board um, in the future um, to ask for, you know, co additional monies to contract for those services. If it is, you know, I, you know, I know employment law well from the in-house standpoint or whatever. But setting up a new agency, I'm not going to dip my toes into that. I, I think I might miss something. That's not my expertise. So um, I have hired Liebert, you know, Liebert Cassidy Whitmore um, to pr to help us with those setup services. And so I think I think we're in good shape to to do what we need to do in January. Okay, and again, Ken, just one second. And again, all these things that we're facing are things that are faced because we're a startup, because we're a brand new organization, an agency, hiring an executive director, transform, taking in money, spending money. We've been going through these growing pains for the last six months, and we're checking off one item after another that needs to be done in order to be up and running. And a year, two years from now, it'll just hopefully be business as usual you know, as an or, or a regular organization. Yes, Ken. Well, I totally agree with those comments and that this is all part of the startup. Uh, the motion gives me uh, the authority to sign the agreement. My intent would be working with Bureau to have that agreement signed rather quickly so we can get them actually under contract on board. Um, and then working again with Bureau to, to identify what items, job description, et cetera, need to be resolved prior to the beginning of outreach and that would include compensation, obviously. And then are there items that can be resolved, you know, sort of after that? And then there, you will have an agenda item on January 16th uh, regarding the executive officer recruitment process, and I don't know quite what it's all going to be, but um, we will keep, one, we'll keep you in the loop. Second is there probably will be some actions at that point in time. Um, the other comment to make is that we've, you have appointed an executive officer uh, recruitment committee of, the, of three three board members plus uh, Morgan Hill staff member Leslie Little who is not available today and what I think should be very should be clear is that that committee is going to continue to function as we move forward I think it, it uh, has worked certainly worked very well today and there needs to be a core group of folks that the consultant can interact with I can interact with and that can interact with everybody else and we won't we will try to make sure that everybody has opportunity to talk with the consultant certainly yep. but we don't want to get tied down to a lot of other details needing to be resolved at an implementation board meeting if it means we lose six weeks in the process sure. Sure. and Ken I want to add on to and be directed to you Vera time is of the essence oh, yeah. in in this um, the motion here as Ken said is authorization for the interim executive officer to sign an agreement. We're talking about CPS HR Consulting. We have a motion, bless you. We have a motion, we have a second. We, we've had our discussion. Then once that's done, charging you 
to get whatever agreements that you need put together so that can be part of what yeah. CPS HR consultant That's why has. we tried to make the RFP as complete as possible when it went yeah. out and we reviewed that carefully was so that we would be very nimble and ready to go. Um, I, only had, I only had one comment on what was said in that. I'm not going to make recommendations as to salary or anything. That's not no. my place. It's a policy right. consideration. But, for example, what the consultant could do is say that the current salary is this and it's negotiable. You know, we yes. can say what it is currently and that it's negotiable. Work some language around that and see what happens, you yeah. know, and, and try to say we're interested in providing certain benefits. Those are negotiable as well. And they, you know, once they get on board, they may have to do some of that work. Thank that you. often and happens. And to so Commissioner Siebert's point that he raised earlier in the concern, I think what you just said, and, and Ken, I appreciate the rate that you're working at compared to what you said the market is, but I think what you just said, and, and we have our consulting firm here, is a very important way to go to say this is what we are currently paying. You know, anything beyond mm -hmm. that is negotiable, and that can all be in the, in the dance that, that is done. But I, by no means, want to start things out at, you know, we think the market's 195 bucks an hour, and da 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 I want to go with, this is what we're currently paying. Mm -hmm. And some people might be coming from more, more or less, whatever. Mm -hmm. that, that's all part of the negotiations that, that take place mm -hmm. in that. And unless there's any opposition, yes. I just wanted to make a quick comment Please. Um, when appropriate. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, recognize CPS as a well-qualified firm. We've worked with them on other recruitments, and they've done exceptional work for us. And secondly, I just want to acknowledge their offer to outreach to us individually. I appreciate the work of the committee, the search committee that's working on this, but I think some of the other board members may have some comments and input, and uh, to the extent we can talk uh, well before January, so that way when this comes back in mid-January, you'll have the benefit of, of all those comments. So, Thank you. And so I'll good, add, good choice. I'll Thank add you. on to what you said as well, because the other two members are not here, but CPS does have a, um, uh, they have done business, are currently doing business with the City of San Jose, the County of Santa Clara, and the Water District. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anybody else from your agencies wish to have any, um, acknowledge any relationship with them as far as full disclosure. Okay. Uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? Did. You just did disclose. For you. We just did for San Jose. Thank you. There you go. And the water, that's right, San Jose and the water district in the county. There we go. We got it and we got Morgan Hill. Thank you. We got it all. Good, good. Anyone else? Otherwise, I'll call for the question. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And uh, Ken, number four, is a report from you. Right. This will be very short. You're going to have a very short meeting. That does not diminish the importance of this meeting. No, this it just shows. This meeting is absolutely critical to my continuing to say that I'm the interim through June and somebody's going to be in place and I can hand this all off, um, which I appreciate and my wife will appreciate even more. Um, I've included in the report a, a meeting schedule. Your next meeting, as well as the governing board meeting, is January 6th. We will put onto that agenda looking at a meeting schedule for the next year. Did we you say January 6th or 16th? I'm sorry, 16th. 16th. January 16th. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. Um, we set regular meetings in the resolution back in May. Uh, that needs to be revisited. There are some issues in terms of a budget adoption. And other issues I think that need to be taken up in, in looking at a meeting schedule for 2014. Um, the um, our special entities process continues to move ahead. We're getting in indications from Gavlin College, Open Space Authority, looks like San Jose Water Company, um, PG&E at least, and, and maybe more. Um, Public Advisory Committee outreach is attached to the report. It went out uh, last, well, last week I guess it was, um, and that our uh, application process runs through December the 16th. It's a Monday. For some reason, I didn't want to say Friday the 13th. Um, and then uh, I've noted an issue that will come back to you as a policy issue sometime in the first quarter, probably, of 2014, uh, which is the nitrogen deposition fees from outside the habitat plan area. We are getting some commitments from development uh, that they will be paying fees voluntarily and we will, we will need to deal with the issues of a variety of issues, uh, dealing with how do you, what do you do with voluntary payments? You take the money and then... Well, you, you know, you first say, you take the money, you cash a check... And then you work out the details. But, uh, but after that, 
There are a variety of issues. We've talked with the wildlife agencies briefly about it last week. They agree, too, that just, there, there are some really interesting issues that need to get sorted out, and we'll get back to you as a policy issue also. So um, with that note, uh, have happy holidays, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in January, except we will be here, you'll be hearing from us, certainly on the Executive Office of Recruitment. Thank you for your report. And committee members, anything else? Anybody else wishes to share or ask? Nope, then we'll say this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job.